I'd like to take a moment to thank my channel members. Thank you. It's continued support like yours that keeps this channel growing. And if you haven't already, please consider joining today. Hello and welcome to That's Just Prime. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Jim Bao Deformation DF-04 Justice Leader Optimum Warrior. This is another one of those figures with a bunch of names, but I love this toy. And what this is, is Jim Bao's copy of DX-9 uh, Dutch. Uh, pretty much the same figure, uh, but for a lot less money. So back when, when Dutch came out, when I got the Sky Pillar, a lot of people asked me if I was going to get Dutch, and, and I didn't. Because for the same price, I thought that Sky Pillar was a much better figure, and I still do. Uh, but I found this guy, the, the Jin Bao version. I got this guy from AliExpress for about $20, and I said, you know what, for $20... I gotta check this figure out. And I'm really glad I did because this is a really, really fun figure. Um, so let's start out with the box. I, I want to get the box out of the way. <laughs> Let me get the figure out of here. Because this is the absolute biggest box I have ever gotten uh, for a figure of this scale. Now keep in mind that this is a Legends class figure and this box is absolutely, this box is bigger than some of the Masterpiece class figures I've been getting. So yeah, it's absolutely enormous, but here you go. Just as Leader Deformation, new version, the F4, uh, the F04, power, protect power, reborn. Okay, uh, very cool artwork. Absolutely love this artwork right here of Optimus Prime. Protect power deformation on the bottom there. Uh, some warnings on the, along the bottom, a product shot on this side, a product shot on that side, or actually that's artwork on that side. And then on the back, you get product shots of the figure, both in robot mode, holding his weapon and in vehicle mode, just as leader changed to truck mode. Not a whole lot to the box. A very nice looking box. I love the pictures, love the artwork, love all of that. But uh, it's just, uh, it's kind of ridiculous that <laughs> the box is that big for a figure of of this scale but here is the figure itself and it comes with a bunch of accessories and as you can see again it is a legends class optimus prime i've already put stickers on mine you guys know how i am uh, but this is actually a very fun little figure so he does come with a sheet of instructions very clear uh, and easy to follow it's just on one side nothing really on the back there um, but it is a very simple figure to transform and work with. He also comes with this flight stand, which is in four pieces. So you have a base, you have two arm pieces here, and then you have the little tip right here. And this is little piece right here. It's got a little peg that's going to plug into the back of the figure. So I thought that was pretty neat. And in every single piece that came with this, there's a big tray in that box, and every piece has its own slot in the tray. It was just very neatly displayed, but it paid for a gigantic box. We're going to set this aside until we need it. We're not going to need that until robot mode. And here we have, what are we going to call this guy? Optimum Warrior? <laughs> or do we want to call him Justice Leader? Uh, I'll probably go back and forth between those two and actually Optimus Prime, so we'll see. But here, here he is. In truck mode and now the truck mode is a bit of a mess um this is this is really the main thing that kind of um kind of kept me away from this figure originally was the truck mode the truck mode is is admittedly a bit of a mess but it, it yeah it's not that bad and the figure is actually so much fun to play with and the robot mode is so cool that you really kind of actually get over that real quick. But the truck mode is approximately four and a half inches long, about two and a half inches tall. The trailer is about six and a half inches long, seven if you put the jetpack. As you can see, you got the jetpack mounted to the front of the trailer right there. So that makes it about seven inches long. Um, a combined length of about um, eight and a half inches. Uh, so it's again, it's a, it's a pretty neat, uh, you know, Legends class or legend size optimus prime for, for comparison here he is next to sky pillar uh which again in truck mode i think sky pillar is definitely better uh the truck mode is cleaner uh, he's got the longer trailer also uh which i absolutely adore the longer trailer on this in fact this entire figure will fit on this trailer <laughs> the entire figure will fit on the trailer check that out so yeah i i just i just love those long trailers 
So yeah, the the truck mode uh, Skype alert definitely takes it, uh, but that's not to say that this is a bad figure. We're gonna th this is a really really cool figure, and this twenty dollar version of it is an absolute must get. Really totally worth checking out. So taking a look at the truck mode right here, you can see it's its classic prime look. You got the red cab with the blue on the back and the gray trailer with the white stripe right there. Let's uh, take the trailer off real quick and we can reach down here and pull the little legs out, the little outriggers, so that you can stand the trailer out just like that. We'll set that off to the side. Let's take a closer look at the cab mode right here. And like I said, the truck mode on this is a bit of a, is a, bit of a mess. Uh, it's not terrible. As you saw, once it, when, when, when it's connected with the trailer, a lot of the stuff gets hidden away. Uh, but on its own, a little bit of a mess. The, the whole side here, you got this kind of a hollow spot right there. And then you got the, the, the wheels seem like they're too far forward. Uh, but really what it is is that the feet are sticking out back way too far. That's what it is. Again, once the trailer's connected, the wheels kind of line up with the front of the trailer right there. And it looks fine. Uh, but on its own, it, it is a bit of a mess. But other than that, the wheels are on these uh, larger head pins right here. The original Dutch figure had smaller pins, and then the wheels themselves were molded differently with actual rims that were painted in silver. looked really nice. These are not as nice as the original Dutch figure, but again, it's a, it's, it's a lot cheaper version of it. Same thing with the wheels back here on the trailer. Those were also painted in silver. They look to be the same wheels, so I'll probably paint those myself. On these, I don't think that there's a whole lot I can do to them because as you can see, the, the wheels themselves, they're molded kind of smooth. There's not a lot of detail molded into those, so the pins are kind of the wheels, right? So we'll just leave it at that. But you got a couple of silver details here. You got the silver gas tanks and the silver smokestacks. Back of the head right there, not too bad. Um, this joint was done in black. I thought this was neat. They did this joint in black, so that kind of makes for a window. So I thought that was kind of neat. Going around the front, Front of the truck is not bad. You got the clear window right there. You got the headlights in silver. You got the grill and the bumper in silver. You got the yellow details right there. The front of the truck actually looks pretty neat right there. So there you go. That's that's the little cab mode right there. Let's take a look at this trailer. A lot of lots of cool stuff here with the trailer. So first things, this figure comes with a jetpack which is pretty neat. The fact that it comes with a jetpack that you can actually put on the figure for that, you know, that one moment from the first, uh, from the pilot episode. Uh, but there it is. The jetpack comes included and for storage, you got two holes on the front of the trailer and you can pick it in right there. So that's actually, I thought, I thought that was really neat that this came included. Set that off to the side. We'll open up the trailer. So the trailer is going to open up like so. You got a couple of ramps here that you can pull out. They'll fall down. And there you go. You got your trailer with your with your ramps, and then of course you got roller, which <laughs> rolls very well and off the table. <laughs> go dig him out. Wow. Okay, he took off on me. There's roller. Really, really neat little rollers. So let's let's take these off because these are also little included accessories. But check it out. There's your roller right there. Wheels, as you saw, <laughs> roll very, very nicely. He's very nicely detailed and gray with some silver details right there. You got a couple of ports on the back there um, for mounting some of the accessories he, you just saw. We'll look at those closer in a moment. The centerpiece right here can flip like that. And I believe this was meant to. <laughs> I think it was meant to pull the trailer, but I don't know. Maybe they forgot to mold the hole in there. I don't know. Um, I don't know if the Dutch figure did pull the trailer or not, but it looks like he was meant to pull the trailer. Maybe if we flip it, we can put one of these pegs. Yeah, that'll work. There you go. He can pull the trailer. So that's pretty good. That is pretty neat. But you got the little piece right there that flips. You have his little gas nozzle or welder. You guys can argue about what that is down in the comments. You can plug those in there. Then you got the little gas pump piece itself. Check that out. And all of these... Um, Prime can hold in his hand as well. So there you go. Pretty neat. And then he's also got the, the his rifle. It's currently plugged in. I'm going to show you why in a moment, which can also plug in here in the center. So he can carry Prime's rifle as well, which is pretty neat. So we'll set him off to the side and we'll open this up. And in this, I really liked. I, mean, I think to stand the trailer up, I think you do have to put this away. So let me stand this up. And I thought this was neat. 
So he comes, of course, with the obligatory rifle and the axe. But as you can see, they can actually be mounted to the trailer so they can actually be properly stored, unlike a lot of these um, Legends class primes where these pieces usually get thrown into the trailer and they're just floating around back there. This one actually stores them properly. So there you go. There's Roller carrying the weapon, as you saw. And the weapon is done very well. Set Roller off to the side. There's a weapon in black with some silver detail. Very, very nice mold to the weapon. And you got the handle. You got a port right there. There you go. That's where you can put that away. And then, of course, the axe itself, which has a little ball that's hollow with the peg, so you can have him hold this. We'll show that off in, in robot mode. But I thought this was neat. If you look at the spikes on, I'm going to call this the mace part of the Energon Axe. If you look at the spikes on the side, they got kind of like that little tube ring right there. And that is what allows you to actually peg that in here for storage, which I thought was great. Absolutely love that. And stand him back up again. And of course, you got the little repair drone here on articulated arms at the base in the center and at the top. So you can move him around. You can spin him around. The little uh, radar piece here, this is translucent plastic. It's on a ball joint, so you can move that up. And then the arm here is also on a ball joint at the base with a hinge at the top right there. The little claw piece is not open or closed, but you can post this and articulate it and whatnot. Now, this doesn't actually open per se. It doesn't hinge open like a cockpit would, but the whole cockpit piece here is translucent plastic and it does slide up and unpeg. So, I don't know, if you had a figure small enough to put in there, you could do that. So, there you go. Again, there's a lot of playability with this figure, and I think that is just really what makes this one. It, there's a lot of playability options, and this is a very, very fun figure. I have been enjoying this figure quite a lot. So, we'll set the trailer uh, to the side here, and along with the jetpack and the rifle. We'll get in the transformation for the figure. So, and as you can imagine, the transformation is relatively simple. So we're going to start right back here with the back of the truck. Just pull that up. That's going to be feet. Take the sides right here. Pull these off. These are tabbed in. There's a little tab right there that slots into the side of the thigh right there. So just pull these off. Separate the legs. And then these are going to hinge in and then down. So it's kind of like a double hinge. Normally, this happens backwards or outwards. This one does work, does it towards the inside. And then you can bring the leg panel down, close that up, and there's a leg. So, again, we're just going to take this and hinge it inward and downward until it clicks in place. Bring this down, close that up, and there's, there's your leg. All done. Move this camera up a bit. Okay, let's grab the arms. The arms are classic Prime style. So these pieces are going to come out and then flip the headlights to reveal the fist. Just like that, bring the arm out. Same on the other side. Bring out the side. Flip the fist. Well, I got tight all of a sudden. That was weird. Flip the arm. Classic Prime style right there. Uh, the head is right here. We can go ahead and bring the head up and turn it around and then close this little panel up right back here. We're going to close that. Uh, the head's not going to sit in place just yet. You'll see why in a moment. Take this little skirt right here, open this up, flip around this waist, and close that skirt up. Take the bumper right here. The bumper's going to split. Open this all the way out like so. And then flip these. Now, the reason that the head doesn't uh, quite flip in just yet. This is really neat. And I, I thought this was really neat. I'd really like this. So uh, I, I like it when primes find a a really original way uh, or ingenious way of doing this. So you got the flat windows like you would on the truck. You notice the angle right here. So this is actually going to lean forward and flip around and then come right back to form a more robot style chest. So you got the more square windows and the actual windows point outwards to come to a point in the center of the chest to make it a little more of a cartoon accurate chest. I love that. And I don't consider that cheating because technically it's still the same windows, right? <laughs> it's still the windows. The whole thing just flipped over. I like that. I think that's, that's really ingenious. So when you bring this back, because that's flat, the head can actually come down all the way. There you go. So let's move the arms up and out of the way. And these panels, um, yeah, I already had these flipped, so these are just going to come straight up to form his sides of his 
torso right there. Bring this down, and there's two little tabs right there. They're going to go into those slots right there. That's going to secure the whole figure. And there you have your Optimum Warrior, Optimus Prime, in his robot mode. Looking really neat. This is a really, really neat looking figure. This robot mode stands approximately five inches tall. And as you can see, he is a very, very clean, neat representation of the cartoon Optimus Prime. Again, the truck mode, I, I you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I thought the truck mode was a little bit of a mess. And when I saw the Dutch figure, that's kind of what kept me away from purchasing that figure. Um, but this robot mode is absolutely fantastic. This is just absolutely beautiful. Again, figure stands approximately five inches tall. Very good representation of Optimus Prime. Love that head sculpt right there. Check that out. And he looks fantastic with the, <laughs> with the insignia. The chest opens up. Check this out. So the chest opens up. He does have a little matrix in there that can come out. It's upside down for some reason, but there it is. <laughs> that can come out. And then that can go right back in there. So that's that's pretty neat. Articulation-wise, the head is on a ball joint. Uh, it can't do a whole lot of up and down, which is kind of a shame considering he came with a flight stand. He can't really go up and down unless you do that. <laughs> so that's kind of a shame. But, you know, you got a little bit of inquisitive tilting inside the side. Shoulders are on ball joints. So you got in and out, forward and backwards all day long. Rotation at the bicep, you have a double bend at the elbow. There's a double hinge right there. Check that out. You do have a little bit of a hollow right there on the forearm where the fist came out of. For a figure this size, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to uh, forgive that. But also check this out. Even though this is on a hinge that comes in and out like this, you still get rotation at the wrist. That is impressive. That is really, really neat. Uh, you got a bit of rotation at the waist. This was due to transformation, but you do have to move or work with the skirt and kind of move it out of the way. Legs are on ball joints. Far, going to go forward that far, back only that far, in and out rotation at the thigh, bend at the knee, and of course, you got all of the ankle totes. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> I wonder if you can... Uh, you can, can you imagine if you could cross his arms and then you can just do one of these? <laughs> that would be so that is kind of neat the fact that i could do that just improv that right there that was pretty neat okay let's uh let's check out his backpack his jetpack jetpack um actually no let's save that for last let's give him his weapon let's do a couple of comparisons first so let's give oh let's give him his weapon let's also show off his energon axe so we'll take that out of the trailer and the Energon Axe, again, he can just hold that right there on his fist, just like that. The rest of the little ball piece there is going to cover the rest of his fist. So that looks pretty neat. That looks really, really neat. Again, for that one moment in the first episode, right? But it can be done, which is neat. Again, it's a really fun play feature, the fact that it can do that. This is a fun figure. And uh, I don't think that was supposed to come out that way. <laughs> there you go. All right. So there he is with his weapon. And uh, let's do a couple of comparisons real quick. So here he is next to Sky Pillar, which I still think was a fantastic figure. So there are the two of them together. And I have to say, I like this truck mode better, but I'm kind of liking his robot mode, this guy's robot mode better. Um, just the arms are cleaner. He looks a little more better proportion, more cartoon accurate. Um, this is a really cool figure. I'm right, really liking that a lot. Either way, both of these figures, right, whichever one of these you get, you can't go wrong with either. They're, they're both fantastic figures. A um, couple of other comparisons. Here he is with uh, David, <laughs> New Age David. Just, you know, we're looking at Legends class figures. So you can see what the two of them look like together. Completely different class figures here uh, in terms of like these are, these are uh, more detailed, more involved transformation and more... Um, you know, cartoon accurate looks and whatnot. These are these are really more playable figures. This is this is a figure you can just have in your desk and fiddle with and play with while you're taking calls, that kind of thing. So, but there you go. So you can see just the size comparison between the two. That was the New Age David, and here he is with Magic Square Light of uh, Light of something. I forget the second Legend one. All of Magic Square's figures are all Light of something. Light of Justice, Light of Freedom, Light of Peace, Light of my coffee that I haven't had this morning. I don't know. So there you go. So you can see what the two light of coffee. There you go. There's that one. I don't know. <laughs> it's very early. I haven't had coffee yet. Let's come around the back and check out the back of the, the bumper pieces right here. They got these pegs or these ports. So you can take the, the, uh, the little jet back, 
peg it in right there. Check that out. So now you can, and again, if you want to break it up, you can break it up and do that. It doesn't look that terrible. It really doesn't. But there you go. You can do a little couple of flight poses and whatnot. And then the figure's got this little port right back here on its back. So that is where you can take this piece and plug that in, just like that. So if you wanted to make some flight poses, you could, let's see if I can, if I can do something here. Point his toes out and there you go. Heroic flight pose engaged. That's pretty neat. Again, the, the whole thing with this figure, I'm going to say, is that this is a fun figure. This is a playable figure. Uh, and that's really neat. So whether you go with the original version, the original Dutch version, which is I th believe was approximately $50, or you go with this version, uh, which is the Jimbao version, that goes for about $20. Uh, this is just a fun, he's not the most perfect Optimus Prime out there, but he's a lot of fun. This is a very fun, simple figure. You can pick it up and transform it in a couple of minutes. And he's got a bunch of little accessories. They all have a place to store neatly. So you don't have pieces floating around in the trailer, banging around and making noise and whatnot. Right now they are because I just have another side, but, uh, He's a very neat, compact little figure with lots of accessories and a lot of playable features, and he is a lot of fun. This is an absolute must-have for any Optimus Prime collection, and I think that about does it for the Jim Bao DF-04 Deformation Justice Warrior Optimum Warrior, Justice Leader Optimum Warrior. He's got way too many names. This guy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time on That's Just Prime.